If you'd like to get a video featured on the series, then just send me an email following the instructions on the screen. Essentially what it is, is that you guys can send me your submissions of your albums on khuxtracker.com containing all of your individual medals for me to look at. Ask me questions related to setups, and I'll personally go over in a video like this one my thoughts and advice on creating the best setup solely based completely on what you have. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts and Cross Nation. And for today's episode, we are going to be looking at Eric's album uh, for today. Now, Eric is a veteran player. Now, Eric ended up asking me quite a lot of questions in his email. Um, so I'm going to be doing the best I can to kind of address each of them one by one. Overall, uh, a lot of the stuff seems to be asking about in terms of like advice about his album and like what should he prioritize in terms of like skills evolving the seven star uh like that type of thing all right so starting off this is what he has to say could you please help me prioritize metal upgrades quite a few of my good metals don't have great skills on them and i like advice on which ones are most important for improving especially for pvp all right so like i said before we're focusing on what exactly should he take a look at to make his setups and such better, but with a focus on PvP if possible. So starting off, he asks what should he evolve to 7 star, and he gave me a list of blue fairies that he has in possession at the time of sending me this email. Hopefully, it's not too late <laughs> for you to receive this, Eric. Um, even if you used up some of your fairies already though, uh, at the very least, Maybe this video will help give you some insight on what you can start focusing on next once you get enough fairies again. He tells me that he has, in order, 5 tier 8 fairies, 4 tier 7 fairies, 27 tier 6 fairies, and 1 tier 5 fairy, and 48 tier 4 fairies. So first of all, we're going to go in order according to tiers, okay? So we're going to just quickly organize and take a look at the tier 8 fairies. All right, so this right here is a list of all of his tier 8 uh, medals that are currently 6 star. Now, when it comes to evolving the higher tier medals, um, there's kind of like a prioritization. Uh, how, how do you word it? Like, there's just prioritiza prioritization in general and on, on as to what you should be looking to try and evolve first before you start evolving other stuff. So in a nutshell, um, especially since you already have the main buffer and debuffer metals such as like Carrying Shion EX Plus. I noticed you have a couple of the prime metals as well, not just this one, but I realized you have the new uh, number seven Terra, I believe as well, the power one um, that provides both upright and reverse buffs. Metals like those are typically the last type of metals you want to evolve to with the possible exception of the stained glass metals just because of the fact they do actually have good multipliers in the beginning slots. Um, so depending on like the traits that you have for them, they can become a candidate for evolving. Uh, but they're not going to be like a main priority typically on what you want to evolve first. But looking at your six star tier eight medals anyways, I noticed right off the bat that you have three medals that have extra attack. Your Phantom, Zaldan Plus, and Vanitas EX Plus, okay? These three right here are automatically going to be your highest priority in terms of what you want to evolve first. Primarily because of the fact you have extra attack. And now to kind of add to it, because of the fact that not only do, do they have extra attack, but your Phantom and Zelda Plus have the ground minus 60 trait on as well. I would personally look at one of these two first. Because not only will they help in modes like PvP, but they will also help in Colosseum. Um, and just the rest of the game modes in general. Even like Organization 13 events as well. Now, personally for me... Because of the fact that I just know how ridiculously useful it is, I would honestly recommend evolving your Phantom first to 7 star. Pretty much because of the fact it has extra attack and the minus 60 trait is just is just like a bonus, okay? Um, you also have the 7 uh, attack boost 7 max and Lux plus skill on it, which is currently one of the best skills at the moment to attack skills to have on a metal. Um, your Zaldan doesn't have anything. Uh, and your Vanitas, although it has a decent 
AB5 max skill on it right now. At the moment, with the rates of like how skills are going, AB5 max is be, uh, becoming kind of like the new norm. It's it's like average at this point. Uh, attack boost 4 max is starting to become like a little bit below average. Attack boost 5 max is like average and anything higher than that is above average or, you know, best. Like, uh, like 7 max and 8 max that we just got this month. But yeah, I would firstly recommend evolving your phantom first just because of how ridiculously useful this is going to be for you in just so many different types of scenarios. Now, granted, there's only a certain number of Keyblades in the first place that can have that speed reverse slot, which is a little bit of a hindrance, but that doesn't matter because even if you don't uh, have a speed reverse slot on your Keyblade, um, which by the way, pretty much only the speed Keyblades have that reverse slot, um, such as Lady Luck. I wouldn't really count Olympia because it's in slot one and chances are you would, you would probably put a buffer or debuffer medal on someone instead anyways. But Lady Luck, Divine Rose, Sleeping Lion, Missing Ache, and Counterpoint as well. I mean, Strike of, Stroke of Midnight, I mean. Uh, these are the ones that are gonna have the speed reverse slots, which is a third of the Keyblades that we currently have at the moment, um, which isn't that bad. But like I said before, you can always put the Phantom Metal in the pet slot uh, to at the very least copy any busted friend medals that you happen to have from your party that's being shared. So I highly recommend evolving Phantom first. Uh, and after that, of course, it depends on if you get any more other busted tier 8 medals later on. Uh, but the next one would probably have to be uh either it depends on how many skills you have i know you listed your skills to me already personally for me i like to try and preserve my skills as much as possible and i'm aware that you asked about potentially cannibalizing some of your medals for their skills uh in which case i'll take a look at that in a sec but depending on the skill that you contemplate on putting on zaldan plus you may want to do zaldan plus just because of the minus 60 trait uh compared to vanitas over here but it just purely depends on the skill that, that may or may not be on Zaldin. Now, in terms of your tier 7 medals, uh, this is currently all of your 6-star tier 7 medals. This one, uh, this one's not nearly as obvious just because, in fact, you do have some quite decent damage medals that you could potentially evolve. Like, for example, you have your Leon over here, which is looking like it's going to be great for raiding um, just because it has the double raids trait on it. And it's not a bad AoE, AoE metal either. Uh, however, you do have certain metals, and these are going to be the two metals that I pretty much end up looking at first. The first of them being the you know Riku and Pain over here, primarily because of the fact it has extra attack. Of course, because of the fact it costs four gauges. Uh, if you were to evolve this seventh or that would mean you would need to put some sort of cost reduction skill on it if possible. Um, even if it's just like an attack boost five max and gauge one from cannibalizing another metal you happen to get from a pole or something. Uh, this is a definite candidate just because it's actually a pretty strong AoE metal. Uh, personally, I like to try and build up raid traits from all the copies that I happen to get from those Organization 13 banners. You know how we get the same medals like every single time for Organization 13 banners? I usually end up just making those medals, uh, my raiding medals, and focus on getting raid traits for it. It's honestly one of the best ways to get very decent raid medals and not have to worry about the fact that the Organization 13 event just keep reprinting the same medals. At the very least, it makes it useful about the fact that they keep reprinting the same ones. So that's just what I do on a personal level. Uh, obviously, you don't have to do that, but this is going to be one of your strongest tier 7 medals as of at the moment anyways. Uh, the other candidate, and this is especially if you're looking for more of a focus on PvP like you asked for, is definitely going to be your Scar. If you evolve your Scar, obviously you like involve uh, like invest some Mickeys and Brooms into him to get him maxed out and the stuff. Uh, and then slap on whatever skill you want, whatever attack skill, preferably a cost reduction skill. Uh, so that way you can not only recover gauges, but also uh, do some do decent damage. This right here, your scar, 
even with the uh, extra attack on the Unirikun Pain, your Scar is still stronger than the Unirikun Pain. Although just slightly stronger, I should probably just note. Okay, but it's still stronger. Uh, so then that note, you can only imagine how strong it would be if you 7 starred it and gave it a good uh, attack boost skill too. So in terms of damage anyways, for PvP, definitely do Scar first. And then next up, maybe consider Yuno Riku and Pain if you need more AoE seven star medals. That's something that I feel like a lot of people don't tend to look at too often is the fact they focus mostly on PvP, um, but don't realize that you still need decent AoE seven star medals as well. So at least give that consideration cloud for raid bosses and then depending on how quickly you tend to get tier 7 fairy blue fairy medals anyways maybe even consider doing your hd vanitas over here um, you can never go wrong with a seven star copy medal although typically i tend to try and save the copy medals towards last uh, on the priority spectrum just because of the fact that the only difference between a copy medal at six star or seven star seven star is literally just the 5,000 extra strength that they receive the stat boost basically because they still even at the six star level they can still copy the seven star multipliers of medals um, they don't need to be seven star themselves to copy seven star multipliers so that's why i kind of send the uh save the copy medals for last but like the fact you have min like minus 60 ground on there does make it a like it's it's something to keep in mind in the back of your mind um, but it's not like a top priority or anything and so i would definitely recommend doing scar first at least in terms of pvp so the next question that you asked, Eric, was uh, out of like the medals that you have, which should you put, like which one should you invest the chips that you happen to get these days, especially since you don't tend to get too many these days. Uh, my first thing is, hopefully it's obvious, but whatever your best damage medals are, just invest your chips into those highest damage medals, like period. Um, so like, for example, if you don't have enough chips on say like your Lexius plus over here definitely do it on Lexius he's he's already one of your strongest damage metals just whatever your highest strongest damage metals are just invest your chips on those first okay and then as you go on after chips maybe consider doing prime metals such as uh, this cloud one right here I notice you don't really have many prime metals in the first place so whatever tier 5 primes you have I think this might be your own one uh, invest in this one just because of the fact that tier 5 primes come in handy so much in PvP. Not because of the fact that they do decent damage, although they do, but mainly because of the fact that they provide like the entire attribute buffs and debuffs, which become super useful in a lot of cases. Uh, depending on what buffer debuffer metals you're using on each keyblade if you're using Kyrie Shion EX plus on like every single keyblade anyways okay that's not nearly as big of a deal then but if you're using like the stained glass metals such as like this Terra over here although obviously if you're using Terra you don't need to use cloud but if you're using the uh like this stained glass right here I think this is number five stained glass number five then yeah using this with cloud would be pretty good especially on certain keyblades such as like uh finrear if you use this and then you use cloud next on slot two you could do stuff like that um so pro so cloud would definitely be like probably the next thing after you do your strongest damage medals and from there you just kind of trickle on down uh the the damage tier list basically all right, so for your next question, you asked, do you recommend fusing some of them into others to transfer the skill, or should I keep them for a sub slot? Uh, essentially, in a nutshell, Eric, th and this is basically what I do as well, depending on like what skills you have at the moment, and you already listened to me that you already have like three in stock, AB7 max engage zero, four max engage two, four max, and Lux plus. Realistically, the four max uh, skills like, although it's nice to have in your pocket, they're already kind of below average anyways, that even if you use them, you're still gonna be kind of lacking a little bit compared to other players. So you might wanna consider uh, cannibalizing some skills instead from metals that you don't care about. You're gonna mainly want to focus on the attack boost five max and like gauge one or attack boost six max skills that come with like seven star medals uh within banners these days 
Uh, such as, for example, let's, let's just say, for the sake of argument, that you don't care about this HD Lark scene over here. You could, it is a valid, like, reasoning to, evolve, like, to cannibalize this HD or Lark scene into a metal that actually needs the skill. Cannibalism is totally fine these days, uh, with how frequent we get the copies of the same metals, especially with the current banners that we've been getting lately, where we're getting tier 6 and higher 7 star medals. Um, believe it or not, there is a very small pool of tier 6 medals in the first place. So it's very easy to get copies of the same tier 6 medals over and over again. So it's more than valid to cannibalize if we wish to do so. Um, and especially for the lower tier medals as well, just because of the fact that they're both not nearly as good in ability anymore, as well as that they're not nearly as good in damage multipliers either. So if you want to cannibalize, by all means, go ahead and do so. Just make sure it's it's you're cannibalizing a metal that you don't care about or do not think you will care about in the future. Personally for me, I like to have at least one copy of each medal just in case, um, but that is up to the discretion of the individual player, of course. In the meantime though, for medals that you're not planning to cannibalize and that are seven star, definitely use them for sub slots. You could do what I do, where, where for example, let me see if I could uh, try and find some of those medals again that you had. You know how you had like a ton of copies of the same metal in tier six? Let's go there. Let's say, yeah, you know how you have like a ton of like Tifun Eris, for example? Uh, just pretend each of them had like a Tapu Six Max or something on it from one of like the seven star banner deals or whatever. Um, you could do what I do. And basically they are there in your inventory as like backups just in case. Um, but in the meantime, until you actually decide to cannibalize one of them, in the meantime, definitely use them as your sub slots. Um, I mean, you don't lose anything by it by making them your sub slots. In the meantime, it just helps you make make you stronger. Um, granted, it does make things a little bit tedious sometimes, though, in the future, because that does mean you have to go back and like replace them in the sub slots section uh, in order to be able to cannibalize them to another metal. But if you're not planning to cannibalize them anytime soon, there's no harm in putting them in the sub slots for now because it's probably going to be a while until you choose to actually cannibalize it. So in terms of cannibalism, that's my thoughts on that. Well, other than that, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope this helped you out, Eric, uh, with your questions. But by all means, if any of you guys wish to partake in the series, please follow the instructions at the beginning of the video. Uh, I haven't really been receiving too many uh, requests or submissions lately, so chances are if you send me your submission, I am very well may likely end up doing it for the next Kingdom Key video. But other than that, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It's the best way to know when I upload more videos such as this one. I do Kingdom Key videos on Sundays. Not every Sunday, it kind of just depends on what's going on and if there's enough submissions, but I will post them on Sundays. But other than that, my name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts and Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.